Hi, this is Troy Hunt, and I'd like to talk to you about insider threats. This is a risk that we face in every organization today, and insiders play a role in a huge proportion of the security incidents that we see every single day. In this course, we're going to look at various attributes of the enemy within. So we're going to start out by looking at where insider threats originate from. And it's a little bit more nuanced than just saying that they always originate from inside. We're going to talk about some of the assets that are targeted via these insider threats, and then talk about the role of malicious insiders. There's a few key motivators that these individuals have. But not every insider is malicious either. So I'm going to talk quite a bit about unintentional insiders. So individuals within organizations that end up playing a role in serious security incidents entirely by accident. Now, whether the insider is malicious or unintentional, we still have this component of insider threats, which is data exfiltration. So how does data actually leave the organization? We're going to look at a number of different channels there. And that's a pretty fundamental part of the mechanics of an insider threat. And then finally, I want to talk about defensive measures. So how do we actually stop this risk from happening in the first place? Or at the very least, how do we mitigate the damage that can be caused by insiders? So that's what we're going to cover. Let's jump into it and start talking about insider threats. Very quickly about me, before we get into the details of this risk. I am Troy Hunt. I spend a lot of my time training technology professionals in order to help them better secure their systems. I travel a lot, do a lot of talks around the world predominantly about security, and I do a lot of speaking and writing on the sorts of topics you're going to hear about in this course. You can find me on Twitter at Troy Hunt or via my blog which is located at TroyHunt.com. So that's enough about me, let's jump into the course and start looking at those insider threats. Just a very quick definition here to be entirely clear about what I mean by an insider threat. As the name suggests, we are talking about someone that comes from within the organization, not always employees though. I'll talk more about that shortly. But this individual has inside information about various aspects of the organization. So they have information and access to systems and other privileges which set them apart from those who are not located within the organization. Now, as I just mentioned, this doesn't necessarily mean that they always have malicious intent. Sometimes they're perfectly honest, hardworking employees. And we'll come back to that class of insider a little bit later on in the course. For now, though, let me give you a perfect example of what an insider actually looks like. This is Greg Chung. He spent 30 years exfiltrating sensitive documents out of Boeing and providing them back to China. All told, he stole about $2 billion worth of secrets from Boeing. Eventually, when the FBI tracked him down, they found a quarter of a million sensitive aerospace documents hidden beneath his home. Now, this is a perfect example of an insider. Greg worked for Boeing. He was within the organization, literally physically within the organization. He was a trusted individual. He had access to very valuable trade secrets. As an insider, he was able to take those documents and then over a period of decades, send them off to China. Now, Greg later got sentenced to 16 years in prison, so it didn't work out real well for him eventually. But he did this for 30 years. And it's probably one of the most significant examples of just how damaging an insider can be to an organization. One of the things that insiders make us do is reconsider how we think about the security boundaries of an organization. Let me show you what I mean. In information security, we're increasingly coming to the realization that the perimeter has become irrelevant. So traditional thinking would consider a perimeter around an organization. And then within that organization, we have various machines that are protected by that perimeter. So what we mean by this is that any external malicious parties are blocked from gaining access to the inside of an organization. 
Now that perimeter may be anything from physical controls, security gates, guards, locked doors, through to digital controls. Firewalls is a perfect example. But when we talk about an insider, the insider is already in the perimeter. So the question we have to start asking ourselves is how do we defend against a risk that's already inside that perimeter? And that's why the title here is so important, the perimeter being irrelevant. Because if we just work on the assumption that the perimeter will save us, it entirely neglects the risk of the insider. Let me give you an example that perfectly illustrates this problem. I'm going to show you a lot of precedents throughout this course. Greg Chung was the first one, but this is another really interesting one. And it was written up by renowned security journalist Brian Krebs. Now back in 2012, Brian wrote about how you could buy access to the inside of Fortune 500 firms. And what he actually found was a service that was renting access to nearly 17,000 infected computers around the world. So these are computers that are already within the perimeter of the organization. The machines themselves have become the insiders. And you could buy access to these machines for very small amounts of money. Brian gives a great example of what this online marketplace looks like. In this image, there's a Windows server you can buy access to. And it actually happens to exist inside Cisco. This one was being sold for $4.55. We can see that price just over to the right of the screen. Cisco did actually confirm that this was a hacked server running RDP. And this is a really good example of just how compromised a perimeter can be when there's actually machines already in the environment being rented out to external malicious parties. Those parties are now insiders. They're inside the network. So hopefully the Greg Chung example and this rented compromised machine example here on Krebs's blog gives you a bit of a sense of what we mean by insiders. But there are many different classes of insider. So let's go and have a look at where those threats actually originate from. 